The frost are coming. The frost are coming. has already come. It is uh, November 7th. I'm out in my garden where I picked my big patch of uh, carrots and I'm glad I decided to go through it because I did wind up getting another quarter of a bucket of carrots out of it, especially the purple ones that I seem to miss in the dark. I wonder why. But anyway, so like I said, the frost has come uh, about a week ago. It came it was a hard frost uh, and some of the uh, not so cold hardy vegetables, uh, the leaves and the, the vines immediately died off, which means basically there's no more nutrition going into these root balls. I might as well pick them. They're not going to grow anymore. So one of the vegetables that's uh, another rooting vegetable that grew a lot quicker than my carrots did is beets. Now, I'm not a fan of beets, just like carrots, not a fan. Guess who is? My wife. And she loves boiled beets and borscht and, and pickled beets and beets with eggs and blah, blah. But anyway, so we're gonna dive into my beet bed. And as you can see, my artichoke, which is a Mediterranean plant, by the way, is still holding up really well. Not only holding up, but it's actually thriving in this cooler weather. Eventually, I know I'm gonna have to chop it down and cover it with, with straw and mulch protected over the winter or the roots will die off but that's not what we're here to look at what we're here to look at are the beets that I planted underneath and in between my artichokes so let me grab a couple of those okay it's a pretty nice looking beet let me bring in for a closer look all right guys so here we are down with my artichokes and my beets and uh, as you can see the cold weather, the cold snap that we had, the first frost that we had, even though today is a beautifully nice day, it doesn't really matter because these plants have lost all their foliage and they're not really gonna grow that much bigger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dive in. And if you remember, if you go to the, uh, when I planted these beets, I planted them high intensity, which means I didn't really leave a lot of room. All right. So as you can see here, I just planted them right alongside of each other and they'll just push each other out of the way and grow right next to each other without really impeding any of their growth. But as you can see, I mean, these, be these beets are, you know, they're, they're the size that you would buy in a farmer's market. As far as I'm concerned, they look a hell of a lot better. I might actually try one of these beets. All right, so I'm gonna go through this bed and I'm gonna pull up these beets. I already have a nice little pile growing here and we'll see what I end up with. So guys, uh, so I started, I was picking all the beets out of this bed with my artichokes here, which my, I swear to you, I swear to you, I thought this was a weed and I neglected to pick it because I was too lazy to pick a damn weed that was this big. So I finally just grabbed the hold of it today. Would you look? I can't wait to wash this off. Would you look at that? I mean, yep, that's a radish too, but that's a tree trunk. Do you see that? Look at the size of that. It's a tree trunk. I don't even know what I'm going to do with this thing. Probably play softball, but let's see. <laughs> the thing is, is I've got a bunch of other things out here that are growing just like that. I, my curiosity has been piqued and I'm just going to grab and start pulling. Um, like this guy here, let's see what this is. Yep, another big, I, I, I really thought these things were just weeds. And then here, all right, it's beautiful too. It looks like we're not just getting beasts today, we're getting more radishes. These are some amazing, I'm tempted just to take a bite for you, but I'm not gonna do it because that's dirty. Holy gigantamo. It's another one, just, Belgian giant, I believe. Belgian giant. I think they live up to their name. How they made it all the way out here from over there, I don't know, but I ain't complaining. Hello, son. Did you produce this for me today? Back to the beats. Some other nasty weed that just took, what is this? That just 
just took over my entire... It's, you would think this was something I intentionally tried to grow. It's got red roots, big leaves. I'm going to dig down a little bit and see what the hell is underneath there. If that's a potato, I'm going to be so upset. Um, do you remember when I told you that if I dug down and found a potato, I was going to be upset? <laughs> I'm not really that upset about it. I guess they must have creeped their way over into this artichoke bed and planted themselves and I actually probably got a better harvest out of my artichoke bed than I did anything else. I'm just, uh, you know what that means, right? I'm gonna have to just uh, do some digging, but I gotta be careful because my I don't wanna disturb my artichokes, but I want sweet potatoes. Oh, not sweet potatoes. Those are just uh, the Andirondack. I can't say it. Andirondack red. So this is where I was rooting around. Haha, <laughs> get it? Rooting around. Uh, and I followed one of them strange red roots back. Something hard. And I pulled it up. Oh, wait. Here we go. Here we go. Woo! That is a beauty! Uh, the skin is so soft it comes off so easily I'm gonna have to be careful with it to let these dry out for a little bit and let them gain their uh, skin before I wash them or do anything to them all right all right what do we got all right, all right. prize number I'm beside myself with this harvest it's just beautiful I went for beets I ended up with radishes beets and now potatoes Well, apparently you can you can grow potatoes and beets next to each other. They do seem to do real well. Oh, I see some. There we go. So that's like four I've gotten so far. Enough for dinner for me tonight. That's all I care about. It's like I'm treasure hunting. Earthworms. You see earthworms up in your raised bed, you know you're doing a good job. Conditioning your soil. Earthworms don't like to go in places that they're it's not hospitable. I got one. I got one. That's a beaut. It's a beaut. It's a beaut. I can't believe I'm potato picking right now. Am I concerned about digging around the uh, artichoke roots? You bet I am. I'd rather leave a potato in the ground than sacrifice my artichoke plants. So I'm going to put this bed all back together the way I found it. I did loosen up the soil a bit. Another. See, all of this is potato vine. And it was actually, it did get hit by the frost, but it still had some green on it. I would have let them go if I would have uh, realized it sooner. You know, que sera, sera. It is what it is. Uh, as I'm doing this, I'm going to go around to all of my artichoke leaves on the bottom, ones that are damaged. I am going to remove them. Give it a last shot of nutrients before winter falls in aerate the soil, get rid of all the dead and dying. I am king of the radish. Ah, ah, don't get me wrong, it's probably gonna be all woody and nasty, and that literally, I didn't know a radish could turn into an actual tree, but that's what it looks like it did. Uh, I'm gonna clean this bad boy up. I'm gonna give it a bite for you guys to see what it tastes like. All right, everyone, here we are. What a pleasant surprise, you know? I went out here today to accomplish getting my beets out of the ground and boy do I have a success story only because I mean the reality was I, I planted so little it was only a two point it was a two by four foot bed but I had also planted six very large artichoke uh, plants in that bed that shaded out these beets. Now I'm so happy that I ended up going back and re-looking at my uh, carrot bed yes a, a lot of these carrots i did get and i did come out to i believe almost 2.5 i mean two pounds five ounces but what i did found when i went through the bed apparently you know obviously last night the uh i couldn't see these dark purple ones so i ended up amassing uh, a very good uh harvest of these purple ones that i went down there today to go get uh 
but that is not today's story of course i'm not even going to try these because i tried them last night on the carrot video you can go back and watch that link in the description i got a lot of these radishes now this one radish that i got uh it is just such an amazing violet purple color uh, but when I did cut into it, I noticed that the stem was hollow, but was really neat. It emptied water out of it like you would imagine a cactus. Like I cut into it. I could have poured it into a cup and drank it, but it is kind of a uh, little rotten. And I'm not expecting a whole lot from these radishes because they do look woody. They were practically a tree, and I expect them to uh, probably taste pretty woody. So I'm just going to cut into one and see where that rot down the stem stops. Is there anything I can harvest out of this? I don't know. That goes pretty deep. Is it worth it? I'll, let me cut again. So I think I got like a um, little under two pounds with these. I'll, I'll put the scale up on the... Uh, on the thing I think I got just under two pounds with these it was like two pounds 15 ounces I don't expect this to taste like much of anything worth it I'll be perfectly honest with you radishes are uh, they're nice once in a while <laughs> but Wow I don't even know what to say. I'm like, I'm just, I, I'm a little bit shocked right now because not only is it not woody, it's extremely tasty. Extremely tasty. Uh, it does have that heat, but not until you get to like the back end of it, you get that natural radish heat. But the flavor of this, the first nose you hit, or almost fruity. Wow. I wish this was a more versatile vegetable. I would use it more often. You know what radishes are good for though? They are excellent for either frying or roasting uh, like you would a potato chip. And it takes all that peppery heat out of it and turns it sweet. So I think I might experiment with this last half here. I don't, I don't want the brown bits in the middle. I'm not really going to concern myself with that. I, no, I'm not going to salvage that. And then I, I didn't even include this one in the weigh-in. I believe it's just a daikon or another one of those uh, poo-looking ones. But, uh, it, you know, it's good. And then I, I just have a bunch. Uh, this nice red one that I'm sure is going to be good. Now, this like this one here... It does have, it's old, and you see it's split down the middle. I do expect it to be woody, and you can tell, like, this top portion here has, like, a bark exterior to it, and this texture down here is very smooth. I'm going to cut it right on that smooth line. That radish still looks really good. Let me... All right, now, it's got more bite to it, but it's not woody. It just had more texture to it, it has more bite to it. It also has less flavor than the last one. Um, eh, it's just spicy, I don't know. It's not even that spicy, there's like not much to it. So where it starts to get barky up here, it turns into a tree, I want to try that. Here, I'll go right down the middle on that one. Well, apparently you can peel it real well. Yeah. Yeah. That's woody as all heck. Bye-bye. I think I hit my neighbor's porch. He's not going to be happy about that. All right, so the radishes came in just under two pounds. 
And then the surprise of the day was the potatoes. Now, I didn't wash these thoroughly because they, the, the skin on them is so thin. If you just scrape it a little bit, the skin comes off. So I want these to dry out in the sun, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I believe these came in at like, oh, I think it was like two pounds, one ounce or something like that, which is fantastic for free potatoes. And these are deliciously sweet potatoes. I absolutely enjoy the Andorive Deck Red this year. Uh, I'm so happy that I at least got another two pounds out of the ground. I'm gonna let them dry up just a little bit before I wash them off. And then I will eat them again. I'm not going to try them because I'm not going to eat a raw potato. It's going to taste bad no matter what. So I'd rather cook them. All right, so here we have the coup de grace of what I was filming today for was the harvest of my beets. And I got a bowl of them. And, uh, oh boy, what did, what did I say they were at? They, I think it was uh, over five pounds. I'm sorry, I can't remember, but I, I'll make sure to, to put a weight up and show you a picture. So I did end up with a couple different types of beets. Uh, as I explained earlier, I'm not a huge fan of beets. I do see what looks like a, a traditional uh, beet with the deep, deep, deep red interior. I am going to take a taste of these just to, I don't know, amuse you people, but I don't like beets when they're cooked I can't imagine why I would like them when they're raw but yeah you see that it has that beautiful you know deep red color that's gonna stain your fingers for days now is it okay oh yeah the face I'm making isn't because it's bad the face I'm making is because I don't like beets. You know, like up front, you get this beautiful taste. It's like sweet and earthy. And then sweet and earthy turns into dirt. And it just becomes dirt as far as I'm concerned. I don't know why anybody would eat this vegetable except for the fact that they need to survive. So I have that one that's deep red in the middle. And then I have a bunch of these that are more like uh, they look like radishes almost but they're definitely not they don't have that radish uh, you know tang to them and uh, and they're not completely red in the middle they are this like gorgeous pink white striped beet uh, maybe I like this a little bit better than the other traditional kind and I have a lot of these, so I hope my wife really likes them. So let me cut off a bit of that. Oh, that's a beautiful little slice. Can you see that? I'll bring it up. Yes, folks. That is a beet. <laughs> and it's beautiful. I'm going to take a bite out of this. All right, let's see. Let's beat it up. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, there's no way that's a bee. Oh yeah, that's a bee. But hmm. Wow. I'm gonna go in for seconds, maybe even thirds. Hmm. It has that beautifully sweet, earthy flavor that you get when you put into the other red one, but it doesn't turn into dirt. But isn't that the surprise of gardening that, you know, you never know what you're gonna get until you start, you know, chopping up the dirt. Did I think I was gonna get potatoes and carrots and, and radishes today besides my beets? And no, absolutely not, but it turned into a wonderful experience. I hope you love this, and I will see you on the next episode.